fact, I think the discussion component is often more focused, often more intense, often more um, thoughtful than uh, typically, what you typically see on campus. Although my classes tend to be interactive, so I can't, that isn't a generalization that I'm comfortable with necessarily because I have pretty good face to face classes also. But I think online almost always is very enriching. I don't think you get that same sense of um, considered reflection in your students' responses in a face-to-face -face classroom because in a face-to-face -face classroom when you ask them a question or even in a testing situation where they might have an essay answer in which they could potentially give such a nice answer, they can't because you know they're on the spot and they're thinking as they're doing. Whereas in the online format, they're allowed to sit back, they're allowed to revise, they're allowed to come at it again and the responses that you get are really, really thoughtful. And then when I read them, I have a lot of time to peruse them and think about them. And I've just learned a lot in, in that kind of exchange. I like that sometimes they can have the time to reflect um, about things. Uh, one of my colleagues and I teach a course. Oh, this is a great, this is, I can just give you an example, but I don't know how to do this one. We teach a course about sexual health. And we talk about decreasing barriers and increasing access to care. And so we give them case studies. And instead of a classroom where students may not feel comfortable discussing some of the things we ask them, and we actually ask them to identify bias in one of our cases, the students have sent back to us that they have appreciated doing the work this way because it gives them time to reflect in a safe environment and then put something forward. Typically in a lot of the, the live classes, it's more a spontaneous response that you get from students. Uh, and in the online environment, particularly if it's asynchronous, students have time to think. They have time to research what their response will be. Um, they have time to read what other people's opinions are, where in the live environment there's very little time for that. Uh, it's more of a spontaneous response you'll get from, stu from students, an intuitive response. And I teach science, so that's the last thing you want in a science class because you want falsification, you want empirical evidence, you want hypothesis testing, you do not want intuitive answers on, on just quick you know, response. So um, I find that it's more in depth. I think the biggest comparison between online and in the classroom, because I am still in the classroom, is that with online, students have the opportunity to explore topics a little bit more than we do in the classroom. In the classroom, even though we don't have bells, you know, like a public high school does, we still have a time frame. You know, class starts at 9, gets done at 10.50 or whatever. We still have that time frame. Online, we do have a module time frame, a limit, but students can discuss, they can take a topic and, and run with it a little bit more than I can really allow for in the classroom. When you listen to the experiences of other people, it expands your own thinking. But students who normally wouldn't speak in a large class or raise their hand were now had a voice. I had students coming up to me at the final exam shaking my hand and saying thank you for giving me a voice. Because we have so many different cultural backgrounds at Stony Brook. Some people don't want to speak up, they're afraid of authority, they're afraid of you know, peer pressure or whatever. This took away all the problems, it leveled the playing field. So I didn't just hear from the top 10% of the class or who was brave enough to speak out, we heard from all of them. They start to respect each other more than they would have respected each other before. They get to know each other, but they're focused on the content. It's not a, it's not a social discussion. It's a, it's a discussion focused on the content, and it's so nice to see. I understand that students um, should, should, that there should be spontaneous participation. You know, the, the discussion posts don't have to be, you know, like mini research papers at all. Uh, it, it should be more like conversation in a face-to-face -face course. I do have writing assignments that are not shared, you know, within the class that only I see. They submit them on drop boxes and I, I comment on them and grade them and so on. But I think that if we want to have, a, you know, even in a discussion forum, even though it is a sort of conversational text that they're putting up there, it is still writing. And that's another thing that is very important to us and in the School of Liberal Arts at FIT. We have made a concerted effort 
to uh, give students plenty of opportunities to work on their writing in our courses. Since FIT really is, it has the, the dominant schools, the largest schools where all the majors are, most of the majors are in the art and design and in business and technology, those are practice-based courses where they're doing things. And so in the liberal arts courses is really where students need to work on their communication skills and, and writing is so important. So I don't want to take away from the writing by having everything be a voice thread comment. When you're in a classroom and you can see the aha moment, it's easy to see that. But when you're working online, you'll get students in a discussion board or students that will email you and, and they have those aha moments. And I think they're almost more excited about it because they're taking what they're thinking and putting it down on paper rather than just their eyes saying, hey, I've got it. They're, they're much more excited about I've got it, I've learned it, and let me let you know that I've got it. And It's exciting to them. They love to problem solve, and that's what we're doing in the classroom between everyone in the discussions and the different debates. We're problem solving, and people love to do that. It's, it's you know, I'm an evolutionary psychologist, so I know that we're designed basically to learn, and we'll, we're designed to learn in a group of people who are not related to each other. We do it very well. I had... Um, one student tell me that he came in, he came in to, to see me in office hours. And he said to me, you know, it took me three weeks to figure out what you wanted from me. So I asked him, so what did I want from you? He said, you wanted me to think. How novel. <laughs> <laughs> and that's it, and I laughed, because it's exactly what I want them to do. Because when you go outside into the real world, there is no such thing as rote memorization and spit this particular information back to me just the way I said it. You need to be able to interact with that. You need to be able to talk to other team members. You're not doing this alone. I don't care what you're going to do for a living. Problem solving is not done by yourself and it's not done for yourself. You get paid to problem solve with other people and you should start to learn how to do that from every aspect. And as you learn the content, what you find out is you learn the content better that way anyway because that's how we're designed to do it in the first place.